Today's episode of Fantasy Fiction is brought to you by Audible.com. Get a free audiobook download at audibletrial.com slash fantasyfiction. Over 100,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, MP3 player, or Magic Stone. Today we're recommending Sword of Shannara by Terry Brooks. It's a book about elves, I think. So if you're enjoying the show, give the free trial a chance. It'll help us pay for the hosting... But I'm not sure what that is. I'm just a wizard. Enjoy the episode. Next scroll. W- Reese's, where are you? In the land of fantasy and the fields of fiction, they roll two knights across the plains. To thieves of the night, to warriors of honor, in the shadow of the mountain cry their name. Fantasy fiction. Until the deed is done. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Fantasy Fiction. My name is Dominic. My name is Josh. My name is Paul. My name is Satchel. Oh yes, oh. we've got two special guests this <laughs> afternoon or evening, whichever you are listening to this in. <laughs> If you guys don't know who Satchel is, he's our friend, first and foremost. But Satchel runs a great YouTube channel. You can check it out at youtube.com slash satchbags. He analyzes games and talks about game theory and a lot of different things, and it's very interesting. So check it out. But before we get into our stories, folks, mm-hmm. what did you do this week? Who goes first? I think, Josh, you have to oh, go first every no, time. I don't want to. <laughs> I rode a griffin to the moon this week. Whoa. That's a good thing to do. I didn't want to tell anyone because I didn't want to make y'all's jealous. I am now, which is bad. I watched (laughs) movies and sat in my pajamas all week long. (laughs) What movies did you watch? Anything fun? Uh, What did I watch this week? I just have Netflix open and I watch Ghostbusters on repeat over and over again. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that sounds like a reasonable thing to do. Yeah. That Winter- sounds like me with the Diablo 1 soundtrack when yeah. I'm writing. Yeah. <laughs> and I listen to Pandora and a, a Tori Amos. I have a Tori Amos channel on my Pandora. So nice. uh, what? Very nice. I get to feel the feelings sometimes, too. You have a favorite album from Tori Amos? The one, I don't remember what it's called, the one where she's on the porch with the gun and her legs out of her yeah, pants. Yeah, 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 yeah. That doesn't sound porch. like... Wait, with the, with the pig that she's, like, breastfeeding or yeah, something? Yeah, she's got, what? like, a breastfeed... Fuck? Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, Tori that's Amos. That's too artsy. That's too artsy for me. I don't, I don't get down with that. Dude, it's good. She's good, man. <laughs> Go ahead, Paul. Well, today, uh, Satchel and I saw Grand Budapest Hotel, Yo. the new Wes Anderson movie. It was fantastic. It was fantastic. I saw it earlier this week. It's really great. It's really funny, man. Don, we, you and I were talking about it before I saw it, and you said that there's like no really significant love interest that's trying to like kind of like push the whole movie along. It's not about that. It made it a very different Wes Anderson film, and it was still really good. It was yeah. an adventure. It was fun. Yeah, it was yeah. a great adventure. It, it definitely felt like he took Fantastic Mr. Fox and was like, I'm going to make an even crazier adventure for adults this time. Yeah. And aesthetically, the photography was awesome. Yeah. Oh, it's beautiful. I, I love those moments where it, it was like... Like, kind of like this analog CGP. It's like a lot of things look like paper overlaid over each other, mm-hmm. like a diorama or whatever. It was really nice. Oh, how about those painted backgrounds? I know. Oh yeah, God. that was great. Those were so great. Yeah, it was really fantastic. I totally saw this movie. <laughs> <laughs> this week, I, uh, I usually don't stream too much, but I decided to uh, stream a little bit. Um, mm-hmm. I had a, I had a bunch of different uh, fun illustration projects that I wanted to get done, and I figured I would just do it while people were watching. There are two illustrators that you guys are very familiar with, Ryan Jampol and Dan Jones. You guys did yeah. the fantasy fiction podcasting together. Dan um, Jones, Jones. I thought, <laughs> Dan Jones, 330 I called that number, and uh, I got busy tones, so clearly Mike Jones is not a man of the people. <laughs> he's, well, he's just real busy. He's a liar! I used to print up uh, bootleg shirts of that for this company my friend owned. <laughs> nice, really? nice, nice, nice. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. But at any rate, there are two, I mean, exceptional artists who constantly do fan art of other things, like whether it's video games or YouTubers I really like. And I was kind of like, how about someone who does fan art of people who do fan art? So I did their fan oh, art. Oh, I saw those. And, uh, that's, yeah, that's cool. Awesome. It was pretty fun. And shout out to them because they're awesome. Hey, what's your Twitch channel just in case people want to check it out? Oh, it's switch.tv slash satchbag. Check it out or else. Can I just plug mine too? 
No, Twitch, yeah, go Twitch.tv ahead. Twitch.tv slash see Paul naked. You could go to that one. I was going to ask if Satchel just left it on when he was sleeping. <laughs> just, <laughs> himself, just so I could tune in to make sure he's okay at night. That's nice. I finally bought Diablo 3 this week. I bought it yesterday. Oh, no. oh, let's play. Let's play. Dude, let's play. I bought it. It was on sale for 20 bucks, and it's pretty good. I think people harp on it pretty bad for whatever reason. I guess maybe the auction house and such, but yeah. I think it's yeah. pretty fun. I'm having a great time. Did you wait to tell Paul this because you knew he was going to J all over himself <laughs> when you told no, him? No, I wasn't sure that Paul was still playing or not, but I do want to play. I actually uh, just booted it up the other night because they made all the changes and i was like oh i gotta check it out and see if it's better and it dude, is dude those gold imps are cool i love that dude that's you know what it reminds me of golden axe when the guy golden would come axe. when he would steal your shit and you really like, beat the crap out of this little guy this little mm-hmm. yeah you I know what that, you know what golden axe reminds me of arcade fantasy <laughs> i was waiting i was like he's gonna say fantasy but let's let him do it <laughs> let him do it why don't we get into it pew, 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 pew. <laughs> Oh, wait, there's no machine guns in fantasy. I'm sorry. Uh, there can be. Uh, you just haven't written it yet. Yeah. I did. I'm writing it down right yeah, now. Yeah, they're stealing that. machine gun. <laughs> <laughs> All right, gentlemen, are you ready? Yes, I am. For my story. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you meant something else. (laughs) Are you ready for that thing? What did you think I was going to do, mean, say? I thought you were going to propose to me. I wouldn't do that on this show. What? You wouldn't? Not this show. We'd have to make a proposal podcast. (laughs) (laughs) The proposal pod with Tom and Josh. We should just do that and then just talk about different ways we'd propose to fantasy people. Like, not fantasy people, but like like celebrities that we would propose to. (laughs) (laughs) New show, add it to the list. First episode, Satchel. (laughs) <laughs> you guys are prolific, man. <laughs> We're prolific. We're something. I don't know. I don't know what condoms have to do with that, though, Paul. <laughs> My story <laughs> is called Cult of the Booty. Oh, damn. This is the story I have been waiting for. <laughs> I'm into this cult. I'm going to join it. Deep in the heart of Daranos' southernmost region lies a jungle so dense it makes 70s porn pubes look like 2007 porn pubes. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you're watching something with Sasha Gray in it because she gave up shaving an age ago. <laughs> <laughs> Within the jungle's deepest unexplored recesses lay two warring factions, the Amazons of Deranos, a fierce tribe of booty having warrior princesses who kill any man who wanders into their sacred lands, and the all-male Cult of the Moons, a cult of magical warlocks who trip out on crazy mushrooms all damn day and worship <laughs> their one true god, Big Booty Bitches. <laughs> oh my god, this is my kind of cult. Yeah. <laughs> It seems like the the two would coexist pretty well. You think, <laughs> but mm-hmm. I don't know. Men and women, you know what they say? Men are from Daranos. Women are from some place in Orkspire. <laughs> that is what they say. I think <laughs> it's canon. <laughs> For centuries, the two factions warred with each other, but it was only until recently that a tenuous peace was achieved. The Amazons, in order to keep their society going, would allow one male from the cult to get buck nasty wild with only the finest and biggest booty having Amazonians. Each male <laughs> would have to undergo a set of trials in order to prove his worth. All males born of Amazonians would be sent back to the cult of the moons or just thrown in the trash. Yeah, <laughs> these women do not give a fuck. Damn. <laughs> just gonna throw a kid away. It was like that part in 300, except there were banana peels and rotten turnips and an old bone couch with a sign on it that said, free, but come on, nobody wants your funky old bone couch. <laughs> <laughs> this nation kind of sounds like reverse China. <laughs> <laughs> what? Wait, what? Because they get rid of the girls. They get rid of the girls there. Oh, right. Oh, but they get rid of the boys here. That's true. Well, thanks for bringing in a little reality. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> he knows. He knows how the show works. Yeah. <laughs> he anyway. <Yeah. laughs> 
Princess Holly Deanna, spoke the Queen of the Amazons. Bring forth the male. The princess pushed a skinny male and his elderly warlock escort into the queen's chamber. The skinny male was medium height with brown hair and barely had any manly chest hair. On his chest, however, was a hello, my name is Carl sticker. Cultist, the queen spoke again. (laughs) Is this your selection for the trials? Ah, yeah, sure, the cultist replied. Uh, could you, like, do us a big solid and pick him? We're kind of running out of guys back at the cult clubhouse. You haven't been sending us, like, any male children at all. No, no. (laughs) None of your males have passed the trials in, like, a a butt's age, cultist. My women grow hungry for man flesh. And by man flesh, I mean they're ready to take the cum train to Bones Hollow. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> if this piece is to last between our people, your men need to be of fine stock and ready to bone 24 7, 69, 5 ever. <laughs> no one can do that. That is, that is impossible to man. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, cool, cool. This one's the real deal, I promise. Okay, Carl, have fun on your date, sweetie. Talk to me when you're ready to be picked up. <laughs> then the cultist lit some wizard weed, packed into a magic mushroom stem, took a hit, turned into a falcon with fire wings, then played space trucking on his enchanted base as he flew into another dimension. I don't know, guys. Carl sounds like he's the real deal. <laughs> wouldn't, it, like, wouldn't it be great if I just wrote a story and just, like, it wasn't about the hero? Like, he just this guy just died, and then, like, that was the end of the story. We just followed this guy who turned into this thing and flew away for, like, the next, like, five minutes. Yeah, I wish. <laughs> just, like, follow his boring little adventure, his little afternoon jaunt that he goes on. <laughs> Are you ready for the trials, worm? The queen asks. Uh, yes, your majestic highness. I am Carl of the Cult of the Moons. As he spoke, he looked over toward the princess and was immediately in love. Her booty was one of the finest in all the land. It was like someone stuffed two hams down her loincloth, and then some kind of wizard turned those hams into a big old golden rump steak, then poured gravy on it, and then the wizard somehow turned that into sexual innuendo. (laughs) The princess looked away, focused on her duties. Although she thought Carl was kind of cute, even though he probably couldn't rip the arms off of a lion or headbutt a boar so hard that it would immediately turn into a whole bunch of sausages. (laughs) Okay, yes, Carl replied. (laughs) The first trial has begun, Holly Deanna spoke. It is the trial of the mind. Yes, the queen spoke. It is a riddle. A man lies in a desert. He was drowned, but he is far away from water. How did this happen? Carl thought for a moment. Uh... Is he from the cold of the moons? No helpsies, the queen yelled. (laughs) Yes! (laughs) No helpsies. Wait, what? So he was? Uh... He died because only a man from the Moon's Cult could be so dumb as to drown in the desert. Ah! Ha, 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 the queen laughed. Correct. The Moon's Cult is so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> this queen is pretty predictable with her hatred. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> she just wears her prejudices on her queen sleeve. Doesn't care at all. Wish I had a queen sleeve. <laughs> Finally, be worth something to somebody. <laughs> You're worth something to me, Dom. Hey, thanks. Aw. Will you marry me? on the proposal, (laughs) Ken. Oh, my God, here it is. (laughs) You passed the first trial, whispered the princess. (laughs) Carl was relieved, but also nervous because she kind of touched his hair, and he didn't want to get a boner because he was only wearing a loincloth, and everyone would totally see his Dong John Silver. (laughs) (laughs) The next trial is a test of the body, the queen spoke. To the pit of spiders! The Amazons escorted Carl to a giant pit full of all kinds of spiders. Across the pit was a rickety old rope bridge. On the bridge stood a very tall, comely Amazonian with a bow staff. You must make it to the other side of the bridge, whelp, said the queen. You guys, like, just keep a pit full of spiders all the time? Yes, replied the queen. (laughs) What do you feed them? Carl questioned. We feed them your stupid fucking questions, barked the queen. (laughs) (laughs) Just then, a whole shit ton of spiders erupted from the pit and spit out a skeleton. Carl recognized the tattered clothing the skeleton was wearing as those worn by (laughs) high priests of the moon's cult. His name was Barry. Carl knew this because he had a Hello, my name is Barry sticker on. (laughs) (laughs) What? (laughs) What? Dude, 
fucking help me! These spiders ate my face! Screamed the skeleton <laughs> as the spiders poured down his skeleton throat. As they did, he died again and turned into a ghost skeleton. He floated up into the air, but the spiders grabbed his ghost robes and pulled him back into the pit. This is fucking horrible, yelled Oh Barry my Sutton. god. What? Tell our brothers of my fate and to walk my dog, Mr. Barksy. Those were Barry's last words. He triple died that day, and Mr. Barksy probably was dead because nobody even knew Barry liked dogs. Aww. The Amazonians cheered. Carl was frightened. The princess reluctantly pushed him at sword point onto the bridge. It was rickety as all fuck. <laughs> The Amazon that stood in his way was perfectly balanced on it. Carl made his way across the bridge. Below him, spiders were going crazy, and he thought one of them called him a cracker, which was pretty uncalled for. <laughs> and, and chronologically awry. <laughs> which is weird, because Carl was Mexican. <laughs> right? <laughs> Super weird. As Carl approached the burly Amazon, she grinned. Hi, can I get past you, please? Just then, the Amazon headbutted him right in the face. His nose exploded with cool blood as he started to fall in the pit. <laughs> Wait, was it like temperature cool or just like really cool no, looking? It's just cool looking, yeah. Sweet. Uh, blood, is, blood is usually cool looking, it except when it's gross. Yeah. Except when it's my blood or someone I love's blood, then it's not cool. Two adjectives that describe blood cool and gross. <laughs> Those are the only two you can use. <laughs> Carl managed to grab onto the side of the bridge. A few spiders crawled up his leg, and it was fucking gross as shit. He managed to pull himself back onto the bridge and immediately roundhouse kicked the Amazon right in the tit. She reeled oh, back in pain. Oh my god, I'm so sorry, Carl apologized. But you fucking headbutted me, and there's like a pit of spiders down there, dude. I mean, what the hell? <laughs> the Amazon took her staff and cracked him right in the nuts. You know the feeling when you get hit in the nuts and you feel it in your butthole? Yeah, it felt like that. <laughs> so it felt like getting hit in the nuts. <laughs> I got hit in the nuts with a basketball one time in gym. Yeah. Dude. Oh I felt gosh. like I had to poop pee and, and barf at the same time. Yeah, it's pretty terrible. It's the worst. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> it's back. <laughs> Carl was done for. The Amazon drew her staff again, ready to knock Carl into the pit, when suddenly the princess shouted, Enough! The Amazon stopped cheering and fell silent. He has passed the trial and stood his ground against one of our greatest warriors. The queen frowned in disapproval. Fine, but he will surely fail his next trial. The trial of virility. <laughs> Amazons! <laughs> Show this man what he loves most. Suddenly, like a hundred naked Amazons started twerking right up in Carl's grill. Damn. <laughs> wow. This is what you wanted, isn't it, dick fart? The queen chided. The Amazons twerked so hard that Carl went blind. Slowly, he was smothered in the finest booty Darinos had ever seen. He lasted about six seconds until he jade in his loincloth. <laughs> Slowly, the world began to fade away as he slipped into a booty coma. He reached his hand out and tried to grab onto the princess. Help me, he cried. The princess turned away, thinking only of her duty to her people. Dude, I'm dying. It's awesome what's happening right now, but seriously, I'm going to die. <laughs> Carl <Graf. laughs> The princess shut her eyes, and a single tear ran down her face. God, I love butts, Carl said as he used his last <laughs> breath to speak the coolest last words ever. <laughs> Just then, the princess let out a howl and spin kicked the shit out of her fellow Amazonian twerkers. They all fell to the ground in shock. No more, the princess shouted. She reached down and picked up Carl. We can no longer be slaves to our old ideas, she said. This man risked everything for a chance at helping both our societies and for a chance at seeing some sweet back meat and maybe brush up against some back tits. I can't let you kill him. Carl was dumbfounded and amazed to be alive. We're going to form our own society where women and men are equal, and I don't know, probably midgets too. But we'll use rocks as money because you never run out of rocks. No more cults and no more gender roles. And we'll it's probably fucking brilliant. <laughs> That's kind of what we do today. Gold's kind <laughs> so, of a rock. <laughs> no more cults and no more gender roles, and we'll probably 69 a lot so that everyone's a winner. <laughs> Carl regained his strength and clasped his hands together, turning himself into a fire falcon. The princess climbed on top, and together they rode off into space. Back at the cultist clubhouse, an elder cultist was double bong hitting some wizard weed. 
Damn. Smoke on the water. Sometimes I turn into guys. Smoke on the water. I'm a totally cool warlock guy. Oh shit, I forgot to pick up Carl. The end. <laughs> if Carl had died, what a way to go, man. That's what the way, way to go. go. Yeah, I yeah. mean, if you're going to pick a way, why not? But I'm glad he had an, enough responsibility to go ahead and plea for help when he was dying. <laughs> yeah, I mean, a lesser man would just let it happen. It would just OD on booty. Yeah. I would just let it happen. I probably would just die. <laughs> Take me away, but Carl didn't have enough pride, so, you know. He just, he, yeah, you know. He, he faced his hubris. He, <laughs> That's good. He knew. <laughs> He went his his huge bris. <laughs> huge butt dis. <laughs> this is this is the worst. <laughs> <laughs> Alright guys. My story, oddly enough, is called Booty is in the Eye of the Beholder. <laughs> <laughs> for, for real? Yeah, we got two booty stories. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, b- before I start my story, I just want to say uh, this story is dedicated to Dominic Moschiti, a man who knows what he loves and isn't afraid to embrace it. <laughs> is it is it big butts? It was dollar fucking dog night at the Amazonian <laughs> death ball game, and you know Greg Steel Grill McCracken was in attendance. <laughs> All the, all the hot dogs one could eat, cheaper than a Wolfman fight, the cheapest fights in town because Wolfman were always fighting, and the ticket was really just a superficial gesture. <laughs> there were for, be- for clarification, uh, I love hot dogs. <laughs> <laughs> I, knew, I figured it would be self-explanatory when you get the first line, you know, it's, it's a dedicated line. <laughs> There were beef dogs, chicken dogs, troll dogs, dog dogs, even Bapple dogs, which were really popular with the share demographic for some reason. The marketers just couldn't figure that one out, but they kept selling. <laughs> and, and of course they had Greg's favorite, assassin dogs. <laughs> What's you know, an assassin? It's the, it's the hot dog that Dom made up that's got four kinds of cheese, and it's got honey mustard, and it's got, I forget what the fourth thing, it was, it was pepper jack, American, provolone. And cheddar, honey mustard, and something else. I can't remember. I, I did was. make that up, but when did I make that up? It was a I long time ago. That. Man, the assassin dog. Man, I know your guys' shit better than you do. Yeah, it, you do. I want that. It was in the assassins episode. Did you time travel and hang out with us and then write down all the things we talked about one time? Because I don't yeah. remember any of this. <laughs> what, is this some kind of recorded show? <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like I did homework before I wrote this. Oh, weird. Almost. <laughs> weird. What's that like? <laughs> Greg McCracken had earned the nickname Steel Grill for his full set of razor-tipped steel teeth, which he called his pussy magnets. <laughs> they were not called this for any romantic reason. In fact, they repelled more women than they attracted, but that didn't bother old Steel Grill. He was known in, to say, in his words, I don't eat pussy. I end it. Wow. Whoa. <laughs> A statement of such confusing bravado that probably only he understood what it meant. I think that's my new favorite thing. <laughs> Steel Grill, you did it again. You dog. <laughs> you dirty dog. You assassin dog. <laughs> in reality, Greg had steel teeth because he'd eaten so many goddamn hot dogs that the chemicals used in the meat curing process had rotted away his tooth enamel completely. Which raised the question, what's his butthole look like? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Holy shit, that's a good question. <laughs> good question. Uh, the night's game was between the crown fried chicken coldest and the storm scale sallies, but no one cared because they both sucked major dongers. Everyone in attendance was there for three things. Cheap seats, cheap meats, and potentially seeing a nipple slip or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. Greg saw his best friend, Crumbs the Mouse Knight, carrying a tray of hot dogs on his tiny head up the stadium steps. <laughs> oh my god, I love him. Yeah, he's cute. <laughs> Try not to trip on his comically oversized cultist jersey. Greg's mouth began to water as he fantasized an endless chain of anthropomorphic assassin dogs happily strutting into his mouth while he sang, Papa loves Mambo, boop a doop Mama loves Mambo, boop a doop A voice came on the... <laughs> They're just dancing in there, man. This is just a story about a guy who wants to eat hot 
<laughs> this is a story about the greatest hot dog celebration of all time, man. Ready for this? A voice came on the PA and began to cheer, What do we love? Greg and the ravenous crowd around him responded, Hot dogs! What do we hate? Not dogs! What makes us eat more? Pot dogs! What are we made of? Mechanically separated meat byproduct, phosphates, fillers, preservatives, and sheep intestines. That... <laughs> That actually wasn't the right response to the last question. It was supposed to be badass Amazonian ass, ass kickery. <laughs> but to be fair, this night was pretty much turning into a, to be a 100% pure hot dog party. <laughs> How are you supposed to know any of the answers to those chants? <laughs> they, dude, they they love hot dogs, man. It's the hot dog chant. You haven't gone to a dollar dog night in a while, have you? No, I haven't, I haven't in a while. That's the truth. Hey, yo, crumbs, <laughs> hit your boy with a dag. One assassin dog coming up, SG. Crumbs reached above his head and grabbed one of the dogs and flung it. Greg opened his mouth and caught the dog between his spiked steel chompers. Another, he said around an unchewed mouthful of hot dog. Crumbs threw him another and another and another. A dog after A dog after A dog. You're going to go pro, SG. You're a champion. You're a beast. I think your mom is attractive. <laughs> Greg almost choked on the hot dog he was chewing. He was about to question Crumb's last statement when suddenly the Crown Light Ale Party Bone Bugatti Speedster came tear assing across the sky. <laughs> Bone Bugatti. <laughs> Behind it trailed a waterfall of ale, freezing into arches of liquid gold. Gnomes wearing jetpacks and ice skates jumped off the car's trunk, skated down the frozen ale waterfall, and launched themselves with their rockets, melting the ice back into cold brood, liquid adult refreshment, and raining it down on the lower level seats. You bet your ass those people got wasted. <laughs> Dude, it's always the lower level seats that get the good shit. I know. Yeah. Well, hold on, hold on. Then, the gnomes <laughs> flew around the entire stadium and shot hot dogs out of t-shirt guns directly into people's mouths. They were really going to fucking town on this hot dog thing. <laughs> this is a story about hot dogs. <laughs> I told you it's dedicated to you, man. It's the greatest one I've, uh, ever made. It's, like, it's the greatest story ever told us. I think, about. I think this is the first story I've ever heard dedicated to Hot <laughs> <laughs> You grab any ale? Greg was having trouble swallowing another four hot dogs he had shoved into his gullet. You bet your ass, said Crumbs. And he handed him a beer in the largest, most ornate war horn purchasable in Bone Car Stadium. Greg took <laughs> it and Bone Car Stadium? <laughs> <laughs> It's like Ford Stadium, like Ford Field. Yeah, like it's got a car stadium. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, man, that's why the bone right. car is, is the, why the, the Coors Light party train is a bone Bugatti in here. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, don't reveal all of your secrets. Yeah, come on. <laughs> Greg took it and gulped the entire thing in a single swallow. He threw up his arms and let out a burp so long and tremulous that a nearby goat man's ears started bleeding and he had to leave the game and go home and watch the game at home and put some cotton swabs in his ears. It was a disappointing <laughs> turn of events for that goat man, but that's life, I guess. <laughs> Air horns blazed. Emerging from either end of the field were the death ball players, massive Amazonian warrior women propelling themselves with booty rockets. Rockets what? powered entirely with the kinetic energy from the vibrations of their super muscled posteriors. Oh my god, this is the greatest yep. story ever. Make written. it clap. <laughs> Make it clap. Dude. Make it clap. <laughs> <laughs> a couple of necromancers on the sidelines summoned a bunch of blood golems, and the Amazons proceeded to dive, kick their heads off, and spread the blood all over the fuck everywhere. And then they did spins and flips and all sorts of crazy pirouettes and ice skating shit on the blood that was literally coating the field. <laughs> what what game is happening? It's, it's Amazonian death ball, dude. It's a fucking affair, man. <laughs> I don't even... I don't understand it. Just go on but for the I ride, love man. It. <laughs> I love it. Yep. The crowd went nuts. It was in a blood frenzy. They started pelting each other in the face with their stupid cheap hot dogs, and some even started choking each other in the blood rage. A black mage <laughs> summoned a cloud of acid rain, and it hovered over the, over the Pain Mines orphans-only charity seating section. Oh, no. Each and every poor forgotten orphan that was sitting there melted, and their gore and bones slid down onto the field, and no one got upset because there was no one that truly loved them in the world anyway. <laughs> well, that takes care oh, of that gosh. problem. Oh, my God. Oh, my gosh. Then... Something crazy happened. What? <laughs> oh, nothing crazy happened yet. Uh huh. A chasm opened on the ground, and out of it erupted the largest beholder anyone had ever seen. A titan of a beholder with thousands of tiny tendril eyes on top of its head. At the center of the tendril eyes, it was wearing the largest sports cap Greg had ever seen. 
Brandon, with the logo of the Darano City Derelicts, it was a bro holder. The crappiest kind of beholder. <laughs> a bro holder. Bro holder. That's good. Oh, that's Shit good. in my ass, said Greg. <laughs> Yo, your guys' teams is stinks. The bro holder yelled as he unleashed a blinding beam of shadow ma- shadow music. I didn't mean to write that. Shadow magic <laughs> from his eye and evaporated half of the stadium. But there was some shadow music in there, too. <laughs> the crowd panicked and tried to run before the bro holder shifted its gaze to the other side of the stadium. The tendril eyes on top of the bro holder's head began to shoot a variety of magics at the fleeing rabble. One blasted an entire section of the fans with beach rock curse. Everyone affected began to dance and gyrate silently to beach rock music that would play in their heads forever until they danced themselves to death. Oh my god. It was, it was the grooviest death possible. One, one section blasted with a transmutation blast, and after a brief flash of light, the fans began to look around at each other. They had all been turned into giant, man-sized fly beings. Every single person committed suicide without a moment of hesitation. <laughs> wow. <laughs> How did they exactly commit suicide? I don't know, man. They just did it as quickly as possible. They just any... OD'd on hot dogs. Whatever, dude, they just smashed their heads into the ground. You know, they, like, they had to end it once they saw yeah. what they were. <laughs> yeah. This has to stop. Greg blew the horn in his, the empty war horn in his hands. The bro holder turned and locked its focus on Greg while its tendril eyes rained magics down, such as Tootsie Roll to death magic. Also, do the robot till death magic, and old timey old person waltz to death magic. Most of its magics were dance to death magics. <laughs> that's that's want- a pretty good school of magic. Yeah, man, it's good. You want to go, cuz? Asked the bro holder. <laughs> Crumbs, in a single smooth motion, whipped his jersey off his body and landed on his default boxing stance, which was similar to the fighting Irish leprechaun, but a lot cuter and far less racist. Irish racist. <laughs> It's not really that, racist. That racist. <laughs> <laughs> also, this is this is the vet. This is just a story about the vet. <laughs> yeah, this is this is pretty much Philly. Yeah. <laughs> this happened every Eagles game. Yeah. This is just a dramatic retelling of an Eagles game <laughs> that you went to one time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you fight him, you got to take both of us," said Crumbs. And then he whispered to Greg, "By the way, SG, if we survive, I'm totally gonna bang your mom." Crumbs. <laughs> I appreciate it, but I, I've got an idea. Also, I'm not sure your wiener is technically big enough for it to be considered actual sex. You know what? We'll discuss this later. <laughs> said Greg. That's a good question. Like, if your yeah. dick was tiny and you put it into a vagina and it didn't do anything, are you actually having sex? I don't know. <laughs> That's the semantics of the situation. That's something Crumbs has to deal with in his life. I think it's something we all have to deal with in our lives. <laughs> At some point. At some point. <laughs> Physiological prerequisites. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Greg looked the bro holder straight in its one eye. There's only one way to settle this, and both Greg and the bro holder said at the same time with every single person there was thinking, Hot dog eating contest, boy! <laughs> Change of scene. <laughs> Two death ball field length trestle tables were laid out before them. Hot dogs lined up side by side the entire length. Greg slipped on two wristbands. He looked back over his shoulder. Crumbs, bring me a hat. <laughs> Crumbs brought him one. Greg took it, slipped it on his head, and then rotated it so that it was motherfucking backwards. The international <laughs> sign for shit is on. <laughs> <laughs> it's true because that's what Ash did in Pokemon. Uh-huh, yep. yeah, shit yep. was on as soon as you saw that, man. Mm-hmm. Also, uh, potentially having a seizure was on at that point, too. Yes, yes. An Amazonian who volunteered let out a blood-curdling scream, and the two dove into their food. Greg shedding hot dog after hot dog between the steel grill, the beholder using its head eye tentacles to levitate the hot dogs directly into its mouth. <laughs> Spit and leftover hot dog detritus flew everywhere. It was like being in the splash zone of a Gallagher concert. Uh, if if that was someone that, you know, existed, and if anyone, if anyone knew who Gallagher was in this realm, and if anyone even cared who Gallagher was, but they probably wouldn't. <laughs> Validated. Validated. Dude, sle- sledge matic It's canon. <laughs> it's canon. They ate for goddamn ever. They ate all night. They ate all the next day. They ate for weeks, and everyone took turns sleeping and keeping watch. Some old people in attendance had to be put on wizard life support because they wanted to see how it end before they croaked. It turned from summer to fall, and a goblin offered up the idea of spicing the remaining hot dogs with pumpkin spice. That goblin was immediately flogged, quartered, hung, incinerated, electrocuted, posthumously poisoned, and thrown into a bottomless pit. This is 
<laughs> oh my was god. It was it the pit that uh, the bro holder came out of? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> <laughs> then it happened. The bro holder couldn't hold on any longer. A hot dog touched one of its fat, quivering lips, and a torrent of vomit erupted from its mouth. Oh, a bunch of its man. a bunch of its eye tendrils screamed, Party fail! The vomit tsunami <laughs> sent everyone sprawling, the crowd lifted by the literal wave of nausea. Ugh. Swirling helplessly on the wave of vomit, Greg and Crumbs grabbed hold of a tree and waited out the flow. When it passed, Greg smiled at Crumbs, revealing a toothless, empty, gummy grin. SG, your grill! You must have eaten so many hot dogs it wore down your second pair of teeth. Greg simply smiled and said in a toothless, flappy voice, I don't eat hot dogs, I end it. The end. <laughs> That's great. What a great story. Great, great story. So Not sure of where it took place. <laughs> <laughs> but wherever it did, it changed lives. It, did. it killed Focus. some. It did. It was four orphans. <laughs> Dude, that's just a regular old Amazonian death ball the game, younglings. man. <laughs> I, mean, I have to imagine that he died the next... The, the bro holder died the next day yeah. due to OD on hot dogs. <laughs> you can do that. That's a thing. Probably dehydration from vomiting and eating so many sodium-enriched hot dogs, too. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, man. That's a, that's a very probable uh, situation. Paul, I haven't oh. eaten hot dogs in two years. Uh, uh-huh. And that story made me not t- to want to eat them for another two years. <laughs> so, I don't know. I kind of want hot dogs now. <laughs> Dom, of course you do. It's a day that ends in Y. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys. Are you ready for my tale of Amazons and Colts, but not hot dogs, sadly? <laughs> Fuck yeah. Nope. Oh, I mean, no. Yes. <laughs> All right, too bad. This one's called (laughs) Demon Tears. (laughs) It was a cold autumn night in Orkspire. The sky was gray with a glowing yellow moon, and crows and ravens were fucking loving that shit. (laughs) One raven had a fucking eyeball in his mouth, and y'all are like, ew. But then he ate it, and y'all are like, double ew. (laughs) Then the raven took flight grabbed a lit lantern from a nearby post and tossed it into a window of a home, immediately setting it ablaze. (laughs) What the fuck? (laughs) What a dick. Then the camera panned over to a sign that said, Double Orphanage. (laughs) (laughs) There were no survivors. Yes! Yes! (laughs) So many orphan deaths. I know. Fuck orphans, dude. (laughs) Paul hates orphans. Jesus. (laughs) <laughs> Confirmed, Paul. Confirmed. What did they? What did they ever do for anyone? You know. <laughs> Jesus, oh my God. So you ever see a little movie called Oliver Twist? <laughs> I haven't. Neither have I. <laughs> is it a movie or is it a book? <laughs> it's a lot of things. I think James Joyce wrote it. <laughs> yeah, James Joyce wrote it. Yep. Meanwhile, not too far from that horrible occurrence, a cloaked traveler ventured out of a forest and into the friendly town of Morogue. When you would walk through Morogue, it was common to hear free samples of licorice <laughs> because that's how friendly the town was. But not on this day. <laughs> oh, shit. Crows and ravens flew overhead. The traveler removed its hood, revealing the cold, beautiful face of an Amazon warrior. She scanned the sky, watching the birds, when suddenly, out of nowhere, a raven with a lantern was coming right for her. (laughs) In a flash, the evil bird dropped the lantern and fell into the flames with a small dagger protruding out of its belly. Yeah, y'all ready for this shit? (laughs) The traveler stood at the edge of town, surveying the situation. Doors beat against buildings in the wind. Blood, discarded weapons, broken glass, and shop signs lay about the ground. A tumble skeleton blew through. (laughs) Damn, some fucked up shit just went down. (laughs) Hell, shouted the traveler. My name is Shiana Fellcutter. Is anyone alive? No answer. She began to walk into town, and as she did, this song played out of nowhere. <laughs> yeah, well, she's a tall Amazon babe, and you know you want to kiss her, 
but you can't, because if you did, your lips would become crippled, because that's how hot slash tough she is. You would get crippled lips, and you would have to wear a cast on your lips. Also, don't try to double cross her, because she'll totally throw a javelin into your pee hole. Wow. Oh, my God. Oh, shit. As the Amazon began to search the town, I continued telling you about her. <laughs> Little was known about Shiana, except for this other song that went like this. Her family was killed by demons, then they were resurrected by a skeleton necromancer, and they were skeleton warriors, and she had to kill her family's skeletons. Then the demons were summoned, and they used her family's bones as weapons. <laughs> Guys, she hates demons. <laughs> Dude, you're a master of exposition. Put it in song. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm also a master of song, first and foremost. First and foremost, yeah. This is like The Hobbit, but better. <laughs> She approached a body lying face first on the ground. She carefully rolled it over. The corpse had been mutilated, drained of its blood, and had a 17-inch dick drawn on its face. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Demons, wow. she whispered to herself. Now, I know you're still wondering how that a 17-inch dick would fit on a guy's face. I, I was. totally was wondering that. <laughs> Well, let's just say it looped around a lot, especially around the eyes, so it looked like he had dick glasses on. <laughs> oh, like those, like, sippy straws that are glasses? <laughs> yeah, like silly straw glasses, but a dick, and but it was, dick. like, tattooed. <laughs> the sound of someone struggling came from one of the nearby stores. Shiana approached the shop's broken window and peered in. Huddled over a body, a wretched goblin in a filthy cloak was trying to pull something out of a corpse's pants pocket. Cursed, sexy, slim fit jeans, said the goblin, <laughs> when the item was freed and he fell back. Aw, oh, yes. Two tickets to Battle Keg on Moon's Vember Moonity 6, a.k.a. my birthday. <laughs> Moonity 6. Moonity 6. <laughs> What the fuck? Moon's <laughs> what? Fucking... That's canon. <laughs> <laughs> a bolt flew through the shop and pinned the goblin's cloak to the floor. Don't move, said the Amazon as she aimed her crossbow at him. Magic distraction dust, yelled the goblin as he threw gold and glitter into the air. It worked. She had taken her eye off the goblin for a second, and he was off running into the forest. She followed after him. After some time of ducking and jumping over obstacles in the forest, the goblin entered a small cave. In the back of the cave was a small carved out staircase which the goblin descended, and the Amazon followed again. As she took her foot off the last step, she realized that the goblin had won the race. The two had entered a dungeon. She was looking down a long hallway with various rooms and halls on each side. She was completely lost, but continued. She quietly walked down the hall. She quietly walked down the hall. Inside the rooms were cultists worshipping rock sculptures of old demonic gods. She remained quiet and pressed forward. The Amazon passed by a room where two skeletons were having a boxing match, and there was an ogre referee. She would have liked to investigate further, like we all wanted her to. <laughs> right. Find that goblin. Usually that's when, yeah. Oh, yes. man. Damn. That's usually, that's usually when some of that stuff we get to know about. Like, that's where Hat Skeleton comes from? Dude. What kind of skeleton you know, could have been? I'll tell you, maybe one of, the, one of the skeletons was named Bones McCracken. All right. I'm, oh, is I'm he related to Greg? Is he related he to Greg? Might be a descendant cousin. <laughs> Shiana discovered an arc doorway covered in runes, leading to a staircase. She looked in. The staircase wrapped around a huge room, and in the center sat a black wizard with a demon's eye in his forehead, relaxed Ugh. on a demon recliner, which was really just two demons on their hands and knees. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Next to the wizard was a red portal to the demon realm. <laughs> Blood-covered demons were all about the room, cleaning and sharpening their blades. A horned demon said to another, Hey, remember that guy I killed by throwing him into your sword? Yes, he replied. We're good demons, <laughs> said the horned demon, and he continued sharpening his blade. <laughs> a huge, buff, dark red demon walked into the room, holding a hot, smoking potion. He handed it to the black wizard. The wizard held it out in front of him. As he did, he whispered something, and his eyes rolled into the back of his head. He sipped it. Immediately, the wizard spat the potion onto the ground and threw the rest of it in the demon's face. You call this a macchiato? <laughs> Shouted the black wizard. Clean it up! 
And bring me the Carmel Drizzler. Dude, this guy's <laughs> evil as shit. He's drinking macchiatos. I know, <laughs> fucking ass. Carmel Drizzler. <laughs> Frustrated, the black wizard stood up and began to walk around the room. He pointed to a demon who was sharpening his axe. What did I tell you? Shouted the black wizard. Count the looted treasure. I'm not paying you minimum demon wage to sit around and <laughs> sharpen wage. your weapons. And this isn't a code if you guys don't listen to what I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta do what I say. That's what a cult is. Now, someone give me a dick rub. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. That sounds sounds like a cult. <laughs> Dude, are you asking for an HJ again? Asked the demon wearing spectacles who was counting the treasure. <laughs> For the last time, it is not an HJ. It's a dick rub to relax my penis after being hard all day, <laughs> casting cool spells and shit. <laughs> I don't shit. know, said the macchiato demon. That sounds a lot like an HJ. <laughs> <laughs> Laser beam shot out of the wizard's demon eye in his forehead, and the macchiato demon burst into guts all over the room. <laughs> you see what happens? You see what happens when you question my dick rubs? <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly, a I think I'd rather flew. burst in the guts than to give that guy a dick rub. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude, this guy's gross. Not that I'm against dick rubs, but that guy, I don't want to give a dick rub. He doesn't but I'm way it. into bursting into guts. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly, a javelin flew through the air and landed right in the black wizard's pee hole. Ah, my pea shooter! <laughs> <laughs> That's the first thing he says. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad he's handled the situation with this, with this with a uh, little bit of merry, merriness, you know? <laughs> Got a, a little poise bit of to him. Yeah. <laughs> the, the demons all looked to see who it was, and they were amazed by Shiana's stone-cold foxiness. That power, that beauty, she is truly a treasure of another kind, said a demon. She's so fine, she makes my dick cry white tears, said another. <laughs> 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 Josh, Josh is dead. Josh OD'd on dick tears. Um, it's too much. That's so good. It's just, it's it's just so too much. much. I love it. So good. <laughs> While they all looked in awe, a hail of bolts, javelins, and arrows fired down, impaling them. The black wizard got up and limped up the staircase and approached the Amazon. You tried to ruin my upstarted coat of f you foul wench? Suck a hundred dicks in the demon realm, <laughs> replied Shiana, and she hurricane kicked the black wizard's head off into the red portal. Damn. And yeah, you could totally hear him essing some demon <laughs> being there. What? How, did, how, did, how did you know? He's like, he's like one of those doom heads, the demon heads that just flies around, but oh, instead of shooting demons? fireballs, yeah, instead of shooting demons? fireballs, he just sucks D. Yeah, now, well, now, yeah, knows, yeah. yeah, in the demon realm. Oh, man. The black wizard and his muscle were slain, but the portal to the demon realm remained open. Unfamiliar with magics, she examined it. The only way to close this portal is to kill everything in sight on the other side. <laughs> and she jumped into the air and did a crazy karate kick into the portal. We remain on the portal. And we're pretty sure we hear the Mortal Kombat theme playing on the other end. <laughs> After a few minutes, Shiana stepped out, covered in blood, as the portal closed behind Jesus, yeah. man. The end. Yeah. yeah. Fuck yeah. I'm ready what to What happened to that goblin? Shit. <laughs> ah, he got away. <laughs> he got away. He got away. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to see. He's he's got to go to a birthday. Concert. No, you're right. I don't care about that goblin anymore. You answered it enough. It's yep. cool. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yo, you know what I love about your story? What's that? It solves uh, erectile dysfunction. Function is the the secret is just to do cool spells all day, and you have a boner all day long. Yeah, well, you got to learn some spells, that's, which takes some time. That's yeah. kind of what taking medicine is. Just taking a cool spell. <laughs> it's taking a cool <laughs> spell. Yeah. Kind S of. Science is magic. Do you got do white what? tears ever come out of your wieners? <laughs> yeah, like three times today it happens. <laughs> I, uh, I I woke up one morning and I wrote that down and I went that. Is that that was it? <laughs> That's great.
All right, well, unfortunately, we don't have time for Reese's and Snickerdoodle this week due to uh, uh, a, an all-sea ball problem. <laughs> yeah, they had an all-sea ball problem this week. <laughs> but they'll be back next week for sure. But mm-hmm. uh, before we go, I just wanted to say thank you to everyone who's downloaded the show or bought a t-shirt or whatever. Of course, we I always say this, but thank you guys so much. It really helps. And I also wanted to say thanks to Paul and Satchel for joining us. Thanks, yes. guys. Dude. Thank you for being here, guys. Thanks for having Dude, us. Thanks for having us, seriously. Absolutely. And I also wanted to say thank you guys for continuing to leave reviews on iTunes. It really helps us out, and we're getting a lot of funny ones. So if you want to write some, some, just something stupid, we don't care. Write whatever you want. Uh, like this one that I'm going to read. <laughs> it's titled, Who Knows What It'll Make Your Mama Say by <laughs> Nikki Rude. <laughs> great, great podcast. Makes Tolkien look like penthouse letters. <laughs> Wow. Wow. <laughs> kind of a bold statement. Those are fighting words. That's, that's pretty <laughs> It'll dying. make your jaw drop harder than your booty when you were crumping on at the club last night. Masterful. <laughs> Dude, not as masterful as that fucking comment. That, yeah, that I, think, great. Uh, I think uh, that was a lot better than things we've written. Yeah, I, that's poetry. <laughs> I think that guy hasn't seen how hard I can crump. Is all I'm saying. <laughs> I don't think the world's seen that, Paul. I think the world's not ready. <laughs> I wish I could unsee it. Yeah, I can't. Yeah. Josh, did you have one you were going to read? Yeah, uh, I thought this one was funny. It's called "What We All Really Want from Fantasy" by Trevor Cop. Extremely enjoyable podcast. Each episode makes me giggle even after a few listens. The show is basically what we all want from fantasy stories. Crazy spells, unstoppable warriors, and butt stuff. Highly recommended. <laughs> we do talk all about a lot of butt stuff. We, uh, including this episode, there's a lot of butt stuff. Fair amount yeah. of butt stuff. You know, my my story didn't have any butt stuff, but did have wiener stuff. Yeah, well, that's like kind of a butt. That's like a front butt, <laughs> an elongated front butt. <laughs> that's the uh, the elongated front butt. Yeah. Thanks, guys, again for listening. Uh, if you are looking for a buff cat shirt, they should be in this week. And check out Satchel's channel. We're gonna put it in the comments. Uh, once again, it's YouTube.com/slash Satchbags. And uh, I don't know anything you want to plug, Paul, before we go. No, yeah, everything I do is everything I do is bullshit. So now. Oh. Mm. Oh. Okay. Well, now that I know how you feel um, about that. Okay. You know what? I will plug something. Um, there's um, there's some really good organic peanut butter that I've been eating. By, oh my uh, god. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I, if you guys want to check out stuff that I'm on, uh, I'm on a show with Josh called Continue Show. And you can check that out on YouTube, youtube.com slash continue show. And you should be on mm-hmm. syndication station at some point, uh, at the some both point. of you. And Satchel, so sh- definitely. Yeah, definitely. I'm sure we'll see you both on there. I, well, I won't see you at all. <laughs> I live in Los Angeles, so I'll just see your voice. And our props for next week are Shamans by MJ Court and Executions, suggested by Justin Brady. So we'll have some stories for you next week involving those two things and until then Paul you know what Satchel yeah Paul and Satchel together yeah they have to do it do it to it and we'll follow follow it up keep on wizarding (laughs) that was perfect it brought a tear to my wizard eye keep on Wizarding, Josh. Keep on wizarding. Keep on wizarding, baby. Gonna wizard all the way through your life. It's gonna be a good life if you're a wizard. Cause you can just Shoot turn up. things into gold. Shoot up. Satchel, your voice is so Shoot beautiful. Up. He's gonna wizard you, baby. All fucking that long with my wizard dick. Whoa! <laughs> I thought this was a story about love. Yeah. When you're in love, you touch dicks. <laughs> it's canon. <laughs> See you next week. Bye. 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 Bye.